Hi everybody, welcome to Sky Ting Live. This is Chrissy, I'm Chloe, and today's class is a gift from the NUCO. It's part of our larger series with them where we focus on something new every week. And so today's class is going to be yoga for sleep, which will be nice, even though it's midday right now for some of you. You can take this class later on Sky Team TV, maybe right before bed, if you need a little extra help in relaxing and quieting down. The Nuka has two products that also can help aid in sleep. One is called Sleep Plus, and it has cool ingredients like valerian root, which will help promote your body shifting into its own upping of melatonin levels to help you relax. And then they also have um, a product called Sleep Drops, which you can keep by your bedside table that can help quiet you down, whether it's like middle of the night waking up or right before bed. So those are two options. And now we're gonna do some yoga that we like to do that helps us unwind and get settled. So the first half of class I'm gonna teach and we're gonna move a little bit to begin. And then the second class, Chrissy will guide us through and we'll really start to quiet ourselves. So to get started, let's come on to uh, hands and knees, move any props off to the side. I will say for later in practice, it could be nice to have, you know, a couch cushion, a blanket, you know, all the things, if you might have like a soft bolster, you can have that for the first part of practice, blocks are always welcome. Um, and then we're gonna begin in a child's pose, knees wide, big toes together. And then you can settle your chest and your forehead heavy towards the floor. If you wanna put a block under the chest, a block under the forehead as just an easy form of grounding. We've done that in some of these uh, new co-classes previously when working with anxiety and needing to, to settle a little bit more. And that also is really nice as we prep our bodies to quiet down for more wholesome rest. So wherever you are in your shape, eyes can settle back in their sockets and maybe you close the eyes all the way and just take a few cycles of breath. Thoughtful inhales, thoughtful exhales. And a really nice breath pattern that we take oftentimes when we're looking to slow ourselves down is called an a sum of riti breath or a non-even breath. And for this, we'll do a slightly longer exhale than our inhale. And so just in child's pose, you can let your elbows rest on the floor. Everything can get a little softer because we'll be here for a few cycles of breath. We'll play this breath maybe towards the end of practice as well, but just to get us started in more of that quiet space. I'm gonna count us with a four count inhale and a six count exhale, and you can follow along if that feels good for you. Take an inhale for one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, again, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, last one in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six. Come back to your regular breath. Maybe just noticing any sort of shifts and changes from a quick minute or so of shifting the pattern of your breath. And then let's shift forward onto the hands and knees. You can move your blocks off to the corners of your mat. So you've just got a clear mat space, hands under shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And then we're gonna just stir around using a cat cow spine. So arching and rounding, but then letting your ribs move around in a circle, letting your hips move around in a circle. Like Chrissy's doing, your head and your neck can move around in a circle. So it's always nice to just let initially our movements of the body be a little more organic, a little less planned, and really the movement doesn't have to be anything too uh, technical or specific. It's you just feeling out where you are in space, what your body might need as you begin to move. And like Chrissy just did, she just did a nice <laughs> yawn. I love yawning and I'm not like at all offended because that means that you're starting to 
move into spaces that might have been a little more tight and there may be just a little more release that you're starting to get through the physical space using your breath. If you've been circling one way, circle the other way. If you want to change the technique and do just classic cat cows, you can. You can flip your wrists around if you've been maybe on a computer for a bit today. All the things that you probably at this point know how to do by being a Sky King student. All of you ever so studious pupils out there. And then you're going to come back through center. Take your hands just a palm print forward from where they are right now. Tuck the toes, lift your knees and hips. You'll come up and back to your first down or facing dog. And with that, pedal out your legs and shift the weight a little side to side, nice and easy. Let your tail wag. Maybe shake your head out gently. No, relax the neck. And then let's walk our hands straight back towards your feet. Come into a forward fold at the back of the mat. As your heels settle heavy into the floor, you can measure out your feet to be about inner hips distance apart, so two fists between the inner arches of the feet, maybe even a slightly wider stance if the legs feel really tight today. And then letting the torso drop heavy, take your hands interlaced at the back of your skull, wrap your elbows closer in towards the face, and with the hands interlaced at the back of the head, as if you could give your spine a little more traction by giving the back line a little more of a tug downward towards the ground. A little rock on your feet side to side, a little swing of the torso side to side. Do all the techniques you know how to do that keep you in your forward fold just a little bit longer than maybe what you want to do initially. Beautiful, and then I'll have you take your hands released heavy towards the floor with the head still heavy, navel pulling into the spine, really slowly start to roll up to stand. Tail drops and vertebra by vertebra, you stack your way up. As the head lifts, simple shoulder roll up, back, and down. Again, like that, shoulders rolling up, back, and then down. Big sweep of your arms up towards the ceiling. Hook your thumbs above you, tick tock to the waist, right to left. Over with the right side and the left side with the hands leaning. Good. And as you come back through center, once you're done with both sides, turn your palms to face in towards one another. Gaze up to your fingertips. Big inhale. On the exhale, swan dive into your legs. Hands coming all the way back down to the floor. Beautiful. Open your chest. Look forward. Crawl your hands forward, 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 all the way out till you're in a high plank position. Simple top of a push-up. Reach the legs strongly back, open your chest, look slightly forward, and then bend the elbows lower straight onto the belly, come to lie down. Hands slightly wider than your mat on the wood floor or whatever kind of floor you have at home next to you, we've got wood, <laughs> and your fingertips, elbows pointed up to the ceiling, inhale, lift your head, your chest away from the ground, and releasing back forward and down. Just a casual rolling cobra shape, anchor your tail back, inhale, you lift and exhaling to release back forward and down. One more here, inhale, you lift up. And exhale to release back forward and down. Good, gather the hands next to your ribs, tuck the toes, push back through hands and knees. Hips come all the way up and back to your downward facing dog. And then just your right foot steps a footprint forward from where it is on the mat. Drop the right heel down, press your right thigh bone back in space. Left toes can be resting on the floor, but not a ton of weight in that left foot. Maybe you come up onto your fingertips if you need to add blocks under the hands to give you just a little more leverage in this shape. Think pressing chest back to thighs still. Right sitting bone lifts high towards the ceiling, so it looks like a down dog if I were to look at you from this side. It's just a little bit shorter. Take one more cycle, breathing in. And exhale, right foot back, left foot forward, same thing, second side, just nice and easy transition. Reach the left heel down to the floor, press the middle of your left thigh bone back in space. Keep the peak of that inverted V shape at the left hip crease and chest still pressing back towards the left thigh. Good, one more cycle, breathing in. And exhale, and then from here, nice and easy, both feet walk all the way forward to the top of the mat. Once you're at the top of the mat, feet separate once again, inner hips distance apart. 
keep a little bend into both knees open your chest look forward maybe you grab two blocks for your hands to rest on a little bit of height so you bring the earth up towards you and then walk your hands even further out in front of you so you get this hybrid shape between downward facing dog and your forward fold the hands should be quite light whether they're on the floor or on those blocks so if i had asked you to lift your right hand or your left hand you should be able to and then I want you to keep the weight in both feet. Walk your hands over towards the right side. As they crawl over to the right, keep a bend in the right knee and start to straighten out your left leg and get all the good stuff that might be sitting tight on that left side of the hip, the outer left leg line and the left waist. Big breath in here. And exhale, walk your hands across the middle and head on over towards the left with both hands reaching on the long diagonal. Press into the right foot, start to straighten your right leg out. Rock your right hip back over to its own side. One more breath in. And exhale. Back to center. You can push one block if you have it off to the side. Keep one block for your right hand. Nope, it's your left hand down on the floor underneath your face. Right hand to your low back, turn your chest open to the right, and then reach the right arm up towards the ceiling. Gaze turns to that top palm. Swim the arm forward, around, down, palm on the block or the floor. Left hand to your low back as you turn your chest, and then left arm reaches up towards the ceiling as you're ready. Take one more cycle of breath in. As you exhale, swim the arm forward, around, all the way down, props off to the side, keep a bend in both knees, hands onto your hips, wrap your elbows back, anchor heavy through the tail, lead with your chest, come all the way up to stand. Good, reach your arms up, big inhale. Hands anchor at the center of the chest and then release the arms down. Sweep the arms up. And then dive into your legs, hands coming all the way down towards the floor. Next inhale, open your chest, lengthen the spine forward, plant your palms, and either step, step, or light hop back, downward facing dog, your choice this early on. From a downward facing dog, forward to a plank pose, and then I want you to come all the way forward into an upward facing dog. So keeping the thigh bones lifted, letting your upper arm bones roll back, lifting the sternum, lifting your cheeks up and then swing your hips high down or facing dog. Two more simple like that. Inhale straight through to an upward facing dog, rolling through your spine. Wave back through downward facing dog, hips are high. Last one here, forward and through to an upward facing dog. And this time knees to the floor, start to pull your hips back toward the heels, point the toes and bring your seat heavy and back to the heels, let your head release down, child pose. Keeping the weight in the heels of the feet, roll up towards the seat. And from here, we're gonna take a few rounds of a, a moving salutation. This is a, a moving salutation. Um, and for that, we're going to be basically working through the idea of coming to a full standing variation and then a full closed seated variation. So very much like a cycle of the moon going around the earth and the, you know, well, around the earth. <laughs> so from a new moon to a full moon, back to a new moon, back to a full moon. And you'll follow along with us if you've never done these before. Hey. Hey, hi, <laughs> we have it together, don't worry, we're okay. All right, so we start seated upright, hands to the center of the chest. You can lift the chest up, you can let the eyes settle to close if that's comfortable for you. And it's always nice to start these salutations. We're thinking about just like the seed of an idea. And maybe it's a, a thought you've been having for a while, maybe it's something that pops into your head just now but something that can move through and come to fruition and then release and become something new. Inhale, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Eyes can open up, gaze lifts up. On the exhale, hinge from the hip line, bring your hands all the way forward down to the floor out in front of you. Now look forward, start to snake the spine forward. You're gonna tuck your toes. As the toes tuck, lift your knees, lift your thighs, upward facing dog. And then pull your hips high, downward facing dog. From here, look forward and take the right foot, step it in between the hands, low lunge on the right side, tapping your back knee down. You can reach the arms up to the ceiling, lifting the gaze up. 
Good, hands come down to the floor, frame your front foot, lift your left knee up, take the left foot, lunge it up to the top of the mat, step forward and fold back into your right. Press into both feet, this time come all the way up to stand, reach the arms up, gaze lift. And then we're gonna reverse it, swan dive back into the legs, hands coming down to the floor, head releases heavy. Open your chest, look forward. This time, let's take a step back with the right foot, low lunge on the left side, tap the back knee down, and once again, the arms sweep up. From here, hands to the floor, step your way back, downward facing dog, left foot meets the right at the back of your mouth. Once again, to an upward facing dog, pull your chest forward, and then knees to the floor, gently pull your hips back, point the toes, come through child's pose. Curl up through the spine as you come to a seat. Reach the arms up towards the ceiling, gaze up. And then anchor the hands at the center of the chest. Same thing, second side. Arms sweep up on your inhale. Exhale, hinge from the hips. Bring the hands out in front of you. Looking forward, inhale, upward facing dog. Transition through, tuck the toes, knees lift. Downward facing dog on your exhale, seat is high. Look forward, step the left foot up, right knee taps down, reach the arms up. And then hands down at the top of the mat, right foot meets the left and you fold. Root to rise, feet press down, reach your arms up, gaze lifts. And then reverse the whole thing, swan dive back into the legs. So from the fullest, you come back towards that new space, open your chest, left foot back, knee taps down, arms sweep up. Hands to the floor, downward facing dog, right foot back. Upward facing dog on your in breath like a wave in the ocean. The waters follow in the pull of the moon. Knees tap to the floor, child's pose, seat to heels, forehead releases down. Curl up towards the seat, reach your arms up towards the ceiling, look up to those palms. And then anchor your hands at the center. One more time each side, a little faster. One is up. Two, you fold forward. Three, you back bend up dog, pull through. Four, you come back down dog. Five, right foot forward for this side, knee down, arms up. Six is the fold at the top of the mat, left foot meets the right. Seven, you rise all the way up to the top, gaze up. And then dive back into the legs, hands coming down to the floor for eight. Look forward, right foot back for nine, High lunge, or Anjaneyasana, I should say. And then 10, you anchor back into your downward facing dog. Wave it through to your upward facing dog. Knees to the floor, child's pose, seat to heels. And then roll up towards the seat, sweep your arms up, look up. Hands anchor at the center of the chest. One more, inhale up. Exhale, you hinge and fold. Inhale, curl forward. Exhale, wave it back. Left foot forward, knee down, sweep the arms. Hands to the top of the mat, right foot steps and you fold. Inhale to rise. Exhale, fold back in. Right foot back, tap the knee down, sweep your arms. Hands to the top of the mat, downward facing up. Wave forward and through. Knees tap down, child's pose. Roll up towards the seat, sweep your arms up. Anchor the hands at the center of the chest. Stay for just a full cycle, breathing in. And exhaling the air out. Beautiful. From here, let's come back onto all fours. We're gonna start to move into more of a restorative practice. Um, and, you know, it's the middle of the day for a lot of you, but you might not realize how much you need a restorative class. We're all doing so much right now on the computers and everything like that, so it's nice to slow it down. Tuck your toes, lift your knees and hips, and go back to downward facing dog. And just take a moment and land. Notice how you feel after that fluid salutation practice that we just did. Uh, moon salutations are, are more of like a watery quality, more of a nighttime quality, less active and more, uh, more simple. Let's take the right leg up and back behind us. 
and then slide the right shin forward for pigeon pose. And for pigeon, you can always use a blanket or a towel, roll it up, put it underneath your seat like Chloe's doing. And then again, like we did in child's pose, if you want and have blocks, one for your chest, one for your forehead. And then just give yourself this time to unravel and go deep. So in yoga, when we draw our attention inward and we look at ourselves and we look at our patterns and our habits, we call that svadhyaya. It's called self-study. So the more time we take to go inward, the more we learn about ourselves, the more we learn about ourselves, the more sort of control we have over our lives. And we can start to direct ourselves in a way that's beneficial for us. So if you don't know, you know, you have habits and tendencies and patterns that aren't serving you, then you'll get steered in that direction. So that's all we're doing here. So it's not a time to space out and, you know, leave your body. It's a time to really focus. Think about how you can square your hips better. The right hip over at three o'clock, the left hip over at nine o'clock. See if you can lengthen your waist more so you get a fuller breath. And then any variations in pigeon you wanna take here are cool by us. If you wanna walk your hands to the right or to the left on a diagonal, I'll help my friend out. Yay. This is Chloe. You didn't know. She's been hanging out with her for quite a while. <laughs> Come back to center, walk it over to the left if you're doing that version. And then let's come back up to center and then lift your chest up, come up into an upright pigeon pose and just rock a little from side to side in more of a back bended shape. Now take your back leg around and make it the front leg. So you'll shift your hips slightly right and swing the left leg forward. So now your left foot is in front of you, flex the toes. The right leg is like in a tree position, Janusharsasana. Face your left leg with your chest, lift your chest up, and then exhale, fold forward, grab around the left foot. Um, and if you can't reach the foot, you can always grab the calf. If you have a belt, you can always put the belt around your foot. And then the forehead can press down on your shin for today, or you can use a block and put your forehead on a block, which is what I like to do. I always like to ground my forehead, especially when we're doing restorative stuff. Chloe put the block on her shin, which is fun. I'm fun. Chloe's fun. I'm sleepy fun. <laughs> night night, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we're back. A few more breaths. And again, if you want to really wind down your nervous system, See if you can make your exhale a few counts longer than the inhale like we did at the beginning of class. Rub your breath against the back of your throat. Sometimes making a slight ujjayi sound with your breath helps to keep your mind engaged in what you're doing. It, it's a sound for your mind to uh, attach to. Inhale, come all the way back up. Let's step the right foot down on the floor and cross the right foot over the left knee. Stay here upright on two sitting bones. If you can, fold your left leg in and sit on two sitting bones, but only if you can get your hips level. Hands around the front knee, lift your chest up, and then take a twist, left elbow hooks past the right knee, right hand goes behind you. If you're pregnant, turn the other way. Don't do close twists. Lift your chest up as you breathe in and then rotate as you breathe out. And it doesn't have to be your deepest twist on these first few breaths. You have five breaths or so to start to travel. Traverse the body, rotate the belly, 
keep your sitting bones down, rotate the ribs around. Good. Inhale back to center, exhale counter, rotate to the left. Inhale to center and then we do a little sweep of the right leg back. You bend your left leg and now um, we're in pigeon pose on the left side. But let's go back to down dog for symmetry's sake and lift the hips up and push through the arms. And now we can do the left side, that whole thing. The left leg lifts and then slide your shin forward for pigeon pose on the left side. When you know we're here for a while, we have a bunch of breaths in the pose. So take your time setting up. Walk forward when you're ready. Put your forehead on something is our preference for today's class at least. Try something new. You don't have to do these poses the same way at every time. In fact, you get more information if you start to change up your game. Do something slightly different each time. Left hip is over at nine o'clock, right hip is over at three o'clock. So you put your pelvis on a grid, which helps you cut right through this left hip joint. We wanna get into the belly of the left glute and cut through the left hip. Back leg is straight back behind you, reaching through the toes, reaching through the sternum. And then any variations you want to take here on this side, if you want to do that diagonal crawl or a twist or anything else that feels good, you can also just stay in the center. Again, if you want, you can engage that longer exhalation, slightly longer than the inhale. And restorative poses don't mean you know, that you have to be floppy and lazy. Go the other way if you're on one side. There's still activity through the body. There's still a consciousness flowing through you. Looking for more space to move the body into, more breath, more room for energy. Come back to the middle and lift your chest up. And then take your back leg and swing it around and make it the front leg. So now we're in Janushirsasana on the other side. Right foot is flexed, left foot's in tree pose. And then face your right leg with your heart and walk your hands forward over this right leg and then maybe forehead to chin, forehead to block. And there's a slight wrapping of the left rib cage down towards your right ankle. So it's like the left ribs go down, but then you try to turn the right ribs up towards the sky as you keep both hips down on the floor, tailbone anchored, breathing in, breathing out. And we're a culture that's very focused on the front of our bodies all the time, like biceps, how our faces look, boob implants, all of that. See what it feels like to bring your attention to the back of your body, the back of your lungs, the back of your heart, the back of your kidneys. Navigate that space with your mind. That too is part of our consciousness. Our whole body is integrated and, and every piece is has the same amount of consciousness available to us. Come all the way up to sit. Let's fold the left knee in, step the foot on the floor, cross it over the right leg, fold the right knee in if you did that on the first side or keep your leg straight like Chloe. Left hand behind you, right arm reaches up, get long and then hook the elbow and turn. You didn't reach the arm up on the first side, but you'll be able Lifting up, turning as you exhale. Inhales typically are to create space. Exhales typically to deepen into whatever posture we're in. So finding length on the inhale, finding depth on the exhale. Last one. And come back to center on your inhale. Counter rotate on your exhale. Come back to center on your inhale and then shake both legs out in front of you. If you have a blanket underneath you, keep it. It's very helpful for this next pose. 
Hashimotanasana, one of my favorite poses. Today we're going to do it more of the Katona version way. So that means our knees are bent. So you're going to sit on the edge of your blanket if you have one. Chloe likes to keep her heels on the mat for comfort. She's totally good. And then lock goes in between your shins. Some of you will need the highest height. Some of you will need two blocks. So just know you have options. Sit up tall and then crawl yourself forward. Take your hands around the outside edges of the feet and then put your forehead down on that block for blocks up. And if the blocks are too high, just lower them down. They have many levels. Walk your butt back a few inches if possible on your blanket or on the mat. Flex your feet a lot and then go for contact. See if you can fit your armpits in your knees. See if you can fit your chest on your thighs. See if you can connect your breathing with your hearing. So contact is safety and in order to have deep rest, we need to feel safe and at ease. So it's really soothing for you, just like, you know, when a baby's crying, you pick it up, you make contact with the baby. When your nervous system is out of whack, you make contact, you self-soothe. One of the best ways to soothe the nervous system is by manipulating the breath, making it have an oceanic sound quality to it. Whenever you go to the ocean, it's nice for humans. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Same thing if you put yourself imaginatively at the ocean, the nervous system's happy. We're going to take a few more breaths. Again, if you can, make the exhale slightly longer than the inhale. Breathing in, breathing out. And then slowly start to roll up to sit. Nice and easy. Okay, so you're going to slide forward if you have a blanket and move your blanket off to the side. We're gonna open up the shoulders a little bit before we really wind down and lie on the floor. So what you're gonna do, I'll demonstrate up here. Is take your hands back like this into an interlaced position with your thumbs up. And then you can see my cool shirt that we have. So it goes right on like the second, third, and fourth rib, interlaced, pinkies webbed in, thumbs up. And then just like Chloe, sitting up tall, slowly start to roll down and lie on that shape of your hands. So it's going to feel uncomfortable at first. It's a shoulder opener, so you'll feel one side is maybe higher than the other side. And then you just wait and let gravity help to open up the pose for you. With time and gravity, your shoulders will start to change. Bones are mostly made of water. They're tissues that are able to bow and bend and straighten and change over time. So it's kind of like when you're looking at how rivers cut through mountain territory, the river kind of directs how the shape of the land goes. If you're always doing a certain pattern with your shoulder, that's going to be the shape of your bones over time, but you can redirect, you know, rivers with sandbags and change the course of nature. So this is kind of like us putting sandbags on ourselves, leveling ourselves off by using the levelness of the floor. One more deep breath in wherever you are. And exhale your breath out. From here, bend your knees, step your feet on the ground, lift your hips up enough to undo your hands and then lower your hips down on the floor and just windshield wiper the knees side to side. You can also kind of cactus the arms up and down if it feels like your arms are broken after that pose. <laughs> and then Find center, we're gonna come into a restorative bridge pose. So that's where you'll want your block or two blocks. And if you don't have a block, use something, a couch cushion. You have something at home that you can use as a block. Okay. 
promise. Lift your hips up. One block goes under your sacrum and you lower your hips down. If possible, lift your hips again, take another block, put it on top of the first block. So you have two underneath you, you're a little higher. This is a really good pose for digestion, a really good restorative back bend shape. We're gonna take it into more of like a legs up the wall variation to drain out the legs, especially if it was a long day and you work on your feet a lot or if you haven't been upside down today at all. So you're gonna bend your knees one at a time into your chest-ish, keep your tailbone down and then reach your legs up towards the sky with a little soft bend in the knees and let the blood from your extremities of the lower body move with gravity to the lungs and heart to get recycled more easily. So this is a really good pose to do at the end of the day. If you have a wall, it's nice to do this pose at the wall so you, you don't have to work so hard in the legs. If you feel like you're stiffening up the hip flexors or um, holding your breath, then come down and don't do this pose. <laughs> you don't want to uh, re-agitate the nervous system at this point in class. We're really going into the depths of our restorative practice. So you can stay here for a few more breaths and then when you're ready, bend your knees, step your feet on the floor. And then when you're ready from there, lift your hips and move the blocks off to the side. Lower the hips down onto the ground. So we're gonna come into a pose that is very similar to Paschimottanasana, this one that we did with our forehead on the ground. So you guys will do rounded plow. That's our next pose. If you wanna turn the other way, you can to maybe show better. Chloe's gonna spin around to get a better angle for you guys to see the demo. So Chloe's gonna swing her legs upside down overhead. She's gonna bend her knees into her armpits or around the ears. And then your hands can either be on your low back for support or you can reach up and grab your feet. If you have a block, Chloe's doing something very nice. She kickstanded her back with the block, so block on a little angle. And that's so you can stay in the pose for longer without having to work hard to, um, to balance in it. So your spine is rounded. You are listening to the sound of your breath again. Longer exhale. You can take any hand variation with your hands grabbing your ankles or feet. And you want to stay here again as long as you can without bothering the nervous system, without quickening your breath, without getting stressed out. So pick a count. Your count will get longer and longer the more you practice. And the more you practice this pose, when I first started doing rounded plows, it was so intense for my spine and now I can stay for 10, 20 minutes. Our teacher Nadine stays for an hour every day, but don't do that if you're new. <laughs> She's worked 40 years to get to that point, or maybe longer. So yoga is really fun because there's all these different types of ways you can change your energy through these postures and breathing techniques. It's kind of like the light of the day, how it's, it gets brighter and darker. And right now we're in like the dark stage of our day, moving in towards sleepy time. Or maybe just a nap for you. <laughs> okay, if you are still in the pose, start to roll your way out. You can pass through happy baby. Make sure you move the block that's underneath you if you have a block underneath you. If you're new to plow pose, it might be crazy on your lower back as you lower down. So take your time coming out of it. It's normal for it to feel slightly achy. It's because you just opened up a ton of space in your spine. 
Next pose from here is Shavasana. So we're going to set up a Shavasana um, nicely. So when you're ready, you're going to roll over to one side. Keep your head really droopy as you press your way up so we can set up our final pose. We're gonna do Shavasana with something under our knees. So I'm gonna set two blocks up like this for Chloe, for her knees, so her knees are bent, or she's gonna set herself up. And then you're going to take a blanket folded like this for underneath the head. And you want the blanket to come all the way up towards your shoulders with the back of your skull resting on the blanket. Your body temperature drops when you're relaxing, so if you want, you can put another blanket on top or your sweatshirt on you, or your sky tank long sleeve rib shirt, or paintbrush, or paintbrush shirt like Chloe's wearing. We're repping our merch today. Close your eyes and go inside. Relax, release. Drop your body weight into the ground. Arms can be wide, palms up, or hands can rest on the belly. And then you really want to focus on relaxing all muscular work from the crown of the head all the way down to the toes. I like to image a bucket of water being poured from the crown of my head down towards my feet a few times. I'll give you a few moments in silence to really rest and if you're in London or if you're watching this video near bedtime, uh, maybe you just want to turn off the video and go straight into bed at this point. how your energy has shifted. This last moment, see if you can drop into relaxation 20% deeper. Really let the weight of your body go. Really release any grip around your digestive system or breath. to breathe a little deeper, bend your knees one at a time, feet on the blocks or feet on the floor, feet on your bolster. Roll to the right side and use your right arm as a little pillow in fetal position for yourself. Release a little bit more any lingering armor around your heart, throat, or eyes. And then come up to sit and you can sit up in a meditative seat on a block or on a blanket facing forward. And we'll finish class together in silence. Eyes closed, palms face down for right now. Spine is long. Body is still relaxed. Rest in harmony with all of your cells, just totally in a state of ease.
you will, you can just slip into bed now. Um, and yeah, this is a helpful thing to do, not just before bed, but restorative practices are so beneficial, especially for us um, human beings right now living through this pandemic where everything's a little more um, high intensity. So we enjoyed teaching you and we hope to, um, we hope you're well and we'll see you soon. This class is going to be on SkyTune TV tomorrow. And thank you to the NUCO for sponsoring, making this class available for free for all of you at home. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Night-night. Night-night. <laughs>